Okay, hi, so welcome to this, my first video on radioactivity. Now, for this set of videos, um, I'm not going to follow the structure of the textbook because I think that radioactivity is something that's really commonly misunderstood. So in this video, what I'm going to do is go over exactly what radioactivity is and we'll look at the three separate types of radiation. All right, so what is radioactivity? Well, here we have a definition. So radioactivity is the process in which an unstable nucleus, okay, so it is unstable, and what that means is that it doesn't like to be in the state that it's in, okay, and we'll see what that means uh, a little bit later. And the nucleus is obviously the nucleus of an atom, all right? So it's the process in which an unstable nucleus loses energy by emitting radiation, okay? And that emitting of radiation is known as radioactive decay. So what we're saying is that there is some atom, right, of a radioactive substance. That nucleus of that atom is not stable, okay? It wants to become more stable. And the way it becomes more stable is by emitting energy, all right? It emits, or it emits radiation, sorry, and therefore energy is contained in that radiation. And so it loses energy to become more stable, okay? And that process by which it emits radiation is known as radioactive decay. All right, now let's have a look at the different types of uh, radiation uh, that can be emitted. And so the first type is known as an alpha particle. All right, and this is the largest uh, particle that can be emitted in radioactivity. So what actually is an alpha particle? Well, an alpha particle can be written as the alpha symbol. Okay, and we write four, two. Okay, now this relates to the mass number and the atomic number of the particle. Right, so you know that mass number from the periodic table is the one at the top. Okay, I'm just going to label that mass number. Okay, and we know that at the bottom you have the smaller number, or in the case of hydrogen it's the same. And that is the atomic number. And the atomic number is sometimes referred to as the proton number because that is the number of protons. Okay, the mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons. Okay, so what we can actually say, and let's switch color for this, that an alpha particle... Okay, is actually two protons, as we can see from the uh, atomic number, and the mass number is four, and that is the protons plus neutrons. And so if there are two protons, that means there must also be two neutrons. Okay, so an alpha particle is actually the release from the nucleus of two protons and two neutrons, right? So you have a, a nucleus which is unstable, it becomes more stable by releasing two protons and two neutrons. All right, now let's have a look at an example of this actually happening. Okay, so if you have a radioactive substance, okay, one example of a radioactive uh, substance is radon, okay, and it's only certain isotopes which are radioactive, by the way. We'll come on to that in a second. But if we have radon, okay, and this at the top is obviously the mass number, and this at the bottom is the atomic number. All right, I'm not going to ask you to work out the number of neutrons and protons, but you could do. Now, if that emits an alpha particle, okay, then what happens is this radon releases the alpha particle, okay, for two. And what's left? Well, what's going to have happened is if you have released two protons and two neutrons, the proton number is going to have gone down by two, okay, or the atomic number is going to have gone down by two. And so that is now 84. And the uh, mass number is going to have gone down by 4 because it's 2 protons and 2 neutrons. So from 219, take away your 4, makes 215. Okay, and you might be tempted to write down, there you go, that's radon um, with now a different mass number and atomic number. However, the atomic number, okay, so this 84, actually defines the element. Okay, so... Uh, if you have an element, it has to always have the same number of protons. And so when you release protons from the nucleus, you've actually produced a new element. And so um, if you had a look in the periodic table, okay, your element with an uh, atomic number of 84 is not radon, it is polonium. Okay, P-O. And so what's happened is your radon has actually emitted an alpha particle, and in doing so, it has now changed into a completely new element, Okay, and it was radon, and now it is polonium. Okay, and one uh, one last thing to mention on alpha is that this alpha particle, sometimes you'll see it written as, I'll put in brackets here, sometimes you'll see it written as 4 to helium, right? Because if you had a look in the periodic table, um, an atom which has four um, 
uh, a mass number of four, sorry, and a proton number of two actually coincides with the element helium, right? So an alpha particle is basically a helium atom, right? I prefer to write it like that alpha to show that it's alpha emission but you might see it written as helium instead but both of those are fine okay so let's have a look at another type of radiation so uh we have uh we've had sorry alpha now we have what's known as beta okay so beta decay and that's when um a nucleus releases a beta particle rather than an alpha particle okay and what a beta particle actually is, I'm going to write this quickly in a different color. A beta particle, it is, it is really, and I'll put this in brackets, a high speed electron. Okay, but what's actually happened is a neutron uh, breaks down into, or let's say it changes into, okay, a neutron changes into. a proton plus electron right so basically what's happening in your nucleus is a neutron turns into a proton and an electron right because if you think a, a neutron has the same mass as a proton an electron has a tiny tiny mass we say it basically has no mass and so one can change into the other but obviously if a neutron changes into a proton You've gone from not being charged to being charged. And so it has to be a proton plus electron in order to cancel that charge out. And so let's have a look at an example. And so if you had uh, carbon-14, okay, so the 14 isotope of carbon, okay, which is less common, this is a radioactive isotope, right? Now, what happens is that releases a beta particle. Okay, and this is where it becomes confusing for people because a beta particle, okay, is a high speed electron, as we said here, right? Which means it has a mass of zero. Okay, so the mass number is zero. However, what we've done is we've turned a neutron into a proton, okay? And that means that uh, the um, atomic number is going to go up, okay? It's going to go up from six to seven. But if I'm going to balance each side, I have six on here, right? This has to be minus one, okay? Because if the number of, uh, or the mass number, sorry, hasn't changed, then I'll still have a mass number of 14. But the number of protons will have gone up because a neutron has turned into a proton, which means that that becomes seven, right? And you'll see that the minus one here and the seven there balances to this six, okay? And it just keeps everything balanced and even. And so a beta particle is written like this as zero, negative one. But all it is is an electron. All right, and so if we had a look in the periodic table, the element with a proton number of seven and a mass of 14 is nitrogen, okay? So your carbon has undergone beta decay and because its proton number has changed, as before, it's now changed element and it's now uh, nitrogen. All right, and lastly, we have what we call gamma radiation, okay? Now, gamma radiation, uh, you won't have to write equations for gamma radiation. The reason being, if I were to write down a gamma particle, okay, and I say that really loosely because it's not really a particle, okay, it would look like this. It would be gamma zero, zero, because what happens is the nucleus actually doesn't change when gamma is emitted, okay? Because a gamma particle or gamma radiation, okay, because it's not actually a particle, um, is not a neutron, it's not a proton, it's not an electron, okay? It's basically an electromagnetic uh, wave or a form of electromagnetic radiation which is given out from the nucleus, okay? That uh, radiation contains energy and so it still satisfies our definition that the nucleus is giving out energy right however it's not changing any of the mass number or the proton uh, slash atomic number okay so if you had something like um, iodine okay certain um, isotopes of iodine are gamma gamma emitters and so its atomic number is 53 all right if I were to show an equation and you won't be asked this right but it's just to prove a point uh, of it emitting gamma radiation Okay, I would have gamma zero zero plus, and the iodine just hasn't changed, right? It's still the same isotope, right? The mass number and the atomic number have not changed. Okay, gamma radiation 
Okay, it's kind of, it's kind of different uh, for that reason to the other two. Um, but all three are what we call ionizing. Okay, so all three are forms of ionizing radiation. What we mean by that is they have the ability to turn things into ions. And that is actually bad, right? So it's bad for us. If we're exposed to ionizing radiation, then we have the chance, um, or we have an increased chance, of um, getting ill, getting disease, uh, and more specifically, cancer. Okay, so ionizing radiation causes cancer. Okay, so it's not a good thing uh, to be exposed to this kind of uh, radiation. However, these types of radiation are useful, okay? They have practical applications, and we'll have a look at those in other videos, right? So in this video, all I wanted to do was introduce you to those three and the definition, obviously, of radioactivity, because I think that's something that's kind of overlooked um, uh, when you're looking at those in your textbooks, and it can cause confusion. So I hope that's cleared that up. I hope it's made sense. Uh, if you do have any more questions on that, feel free to pop them in the box below or send me a direct email using the link. But as usual, please like and subscribe because it really helps me out. And obviously you'll get notified for more videos when I upload those. But I look forward to seeing you in the next one.